Although it's true that digital imaging has largely taken over the days where you needed incredible precision, otherwise you wouldn't even get a visible image, there are still reasons why you still need to know them, which I talked about in a previous video. Link down below if you haven't seen that yet. I see a lot of students that get overwhelmed because they think they need to memorize the entire exposure chart from head to toe or from limb to limb. And that's probably the single most inefficient thing you can do. And here's why. The exposure you give can vary with so many different factors, it's not even funny. Firstly, it depends on your anatomical region of interest. It also depends on the the size of your patient and how much muscle or fat they have, that is their tissue composition. Whether it's in or out of Bucky, that is if there is a grid or not. Of course if it's CR or DR, the x-ray machine manufacturer or the vendor and how old the machine is. And it probably also depends on the weather that day as well. So in the next few minutes I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to know and how to go about this seemingly daunting task. Again, timestamps below for convenience. Now trying to memorize three pages of numbers for all body parts all body types and the different manufacturers, it's highly inefficient and it's just a waste of time. Let me tell you, there's a much better systematic way if you just think about it differently. Radiography, unlike fundamental physics, is not an exact science. I know, I was also devastated because like yourself, I like things to be predictable. But look, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Here's what you need to do. And this is the key takeaway from this video, okay? Instead of memorizing them all, just memorize a few key ones and then guess the rest. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video. Okay, so by guess, I really mean interpolate, which basically means to fill in the gaps by what it would be from the known surrounding values. All the few key ones we've committed to memory. For example, if I know that a finger exposure is about 50 kVp and 1.5 mAs, and an elbow exposure is about 60 kVp and 3 mAs, and then you ask me what should I give for a wrist, well I know the kVp should be somewhere between 50 and 60, so let's say 55 kVp, and the mAs should be somewhere between 1.5 and 3, so let's say 2 mAs. Because I know intuitively that the thickness of my wrist is somewhere between the thickness of my finger and elbow. You can do the same thing with your lower extremity. If I know a foot exposure should be about 55 kVp and 3 mAs, and an average adult knee should be about 65 kV and 5 mAs, then I can interpolate that for a tib fib or a lower leg x-ray. That I should set my exposure at about 60 kVp and 4 mAs. Make sense? Now notice these two examples were out of Bucky, that is no grid involvement. So what happens when we need to include the large areas of our body that do need a grid? Well first of all, the general rule is that if you're going to use a grid, the anatomy should be at least over 10 centimeters in thickness. So for example, your shoulder, your hip, some femurs, etc. And the other rule is, is that you want your KVP to be at least over 60. And that if you're taking out your grid, you would drop down your exposure by about 5 KVP and roughly half your MAS. Now, of course, these are all just guides, but they do seem to work well with this exercise. Now, let's try this with our earlier examples. Let's say that I know a shoulder x-ray exposure for the average adult is about 70 KVP and 12 MAS. And a finger exposure, which I mentioned earlier, was about 50 KV and 1.5 MAS. And then you ask me, what should I give for an elbow x-ray? Well, the thickness of my elbow should be somewhere between the thickness of my finger and shoulder, roughly. Okay, so let's consider the shoulder exposure first. It's generally done in a grid, but the elbow isn't. So if I take out the grid, my KVP comes down from 70 to let's say 65 KV, and my MAS from 12 to about 6 MAS. So given that the thickness of my elbow is somewhere between my finger and shoulder, it should make sense that the exposure is somewhere in between. Right? It really all fundamentally comes down to what thickness of anatomy am I trying to penetrate? Halfway between 50 and 65 is about 57, 58 kV, and halfway between 1.5 and 6 MAS is about 3 to 4. And there you have it. That's what I would give for an elbow x ray for the average adult. It's very close, and in fact, close enough to the official exposure we said, which was about 60 kVp and 3 MAS. That wasn't too hard, was it? Here's another example. If I know that the average hip x ray exposure for the average adult is about 75 kV, and 25 MAS, and a foot exposure is about 55 kV and 3 MAS, how much would a knee exposure be? And in this case, I'd say the typical knee is a little smaller in thickness than this straight in between the hip and the foot. So whatever we get, I'll just decrease it a bit. All right, so starting from the hip, it's in Bucky, so if we take out the grid, we're gonna give something like 70 kV and about 12 MAS. Halfway between 70 and 55 kV is about 62 to 63, and halfway between 12 and 3 MAS is about seven to eight. And if we just decrease a bit from each, we can round it down to about 62 kV and about six MAS. But honestly, I'd be happy to keep it as it was if I found that my patient wasn't as lean. Are you getting it? Are you getting it?
again, it's close enough to what would be considered the ideal exposure. So it'd be more than fine. So the lesson is do not remember it all, only memorize a few key ones and then guess the rest. All right, now let's put it all together. We're taking advantage of the fact that as humans, our anatomy tends to decrease in thickness from our center to our extremities quite linearly. How good are these drawings, by the way? Now, of course, this is a generalization, but it is true for the majority of people. And it's very helpful for us to grasp the concept because once you do, you can make these calculations intuitively in your head and any variance from this rule can easily be accounted for. Now, this idea becomes really powerful when you're met with a situation where there is no preset exposure for you to select or when there's a great deal of variation in some Size in the area of interest. And a good example of this are abdomen x-rays. Let's say you're working on your own, you're a junior rad, which means everything is more intimidating, and you get an abdomen x-ray referral for a four-year-old. And your immediate reaction is to panic because there is no pediatric abdomen exposure button. And you haven't memorized what an appropriate exposure would be for this kind of patient. Been there, done that, and can confirm it was in fact stressful. But let's just think about it for two seconds. I estimated that an average four-year-old's abdomen would be about that thick. And so what's also that thick on an average adult? My shoulder. All right, cool. So now I have a base to work on because I know that my shoulder exposure is about 70 kVp and 12 MAS. But my shoulder has some dense bone and some muscle around it. Whereas the abdomen of the four-year-old doesn't as much and it's mostly soft tissue, the organs. So immediately I'm thinking, okay, what do I get if I remove the grit? I come down to about 65 kV and about six MAS. And given that I just reasoned that the four-year-old's abdomen isn't as dense as my shoulder, I might bump down the exposure to about 63 kV and about five MAS. And there you have it. See how easy that was? It took me all of what, five to 10 seconds to come up with that figure. And it's pretty accurate because I understand what exposures are and how and why they work. And now you do too. I hope that helps. And I encourage you to take these basic principles and make it the foundation of how you go about setting your exposures. Experiment and see what works and you'll find that you'll be mastering them in no time. All right, that's it for now. If you haven't seen my earlier video on radiographic exposure factors, click here for that. I think you'll get a lot of value out of it and stay curious.